A warm welcome to all my students. I am here today with a lesson titled Glimpses of India. This is subdivided into three parts and today we shall focus on part one titled A Baker from Goa written by Lucio Rodriguez. Professor Lucio Rodriguez is a literary genius that Goa has produced. He may have long departed this world, but his legacy of literature lives on through his writing and his students. His essays in English as well as those translated from Konkani were published as Of Soil and Soul and Konkani Folk Tales after his death in 1973. So in this lesson, the author, Lucio, talks about Goa and the good old Portuguese days. He takes us on a tour of a traditional Goan bakery and from here we get to know that bread making was introduced to the Goans by the Portuguese. He also remembers his elders think fondly of their past days and the famous loaves of bread. He says that the eaters of those loaves may have vanished, but the makers, the mixers, the molders, the bakers, and the old age time tested furnaces still exist, and that the fire in the furnaces has not yet been extinguished. The thud and the jingle of the traditional baker's bamboo. Heralding his arrival in the morning can still be heard in some places. These bakers are even today known as Padir in Goa. Lucio remembers how he and his friends during their childhood used to run and greet the baker whom they then considered their companion and friend. He used to come twice daily, once when out to sell the bread and next when returning back after selling it all off. The jingling thud of his bamboo woke them up from their sleep and made them run towards him. And it wasn't love of the loaf that made them do so, but rather the bread bangles and sometimes the sweet bread of special make. The loaves of bread were bought by Basta or made of the house. He is reminded then of the musical entry of the baker with jang jang sound of his specially made bamboo stuff. He would greet the lady of the house and place the basket on the vertical bamboo. The kids would be then pushed aside with a mild scolding and loaves delivered to the servant. He and his friends would climb the bench or parapet just to peep into the basket. He remembers the typical smell of the loaves, which were for the elders and bangles for them. He fondly remembers not caring to brush his teeth as he knew that hot tea would wash and clean up everything so nicely. Plus, tigers never brush their teeth. He tells us that marriage gifts were considered meaningless without the bread known as bowl. Baking and baker were considered very important. The lady of the house had to prepare sandwiches on her daughter's engagement. Cakes and bolines were a must for Christmas and other festivals. The bread sellers during the days of the Portuguese wore a peculiar dress known as kabai, which was a single piece of long frock reaching down to the knees. He also remembers how as a child he used to see bakers wearing a shirt and trousers which were shorter than full pants and longer than half pants. Bakers usually collected their bills at the end of the month and monthly accounts used to be recorded on some wall in pencil. Baking was a profitable business and the baker, his family and his servants always looked happy, plump and prosperous. And hence, even today, a person with jackfruit-like appearance, or you can call them fat, 
is always compared to a baker. And with this, we come to the end of part one for you. Please be tuned for part two titled Gurg, which will be presented very soon. Until then, take care and stay safe.